Ciao, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. Today we are doing three delicious, scrumptious, summertime pasta salads. I am so excited for these three recipes today for so many reasons. One, pasta salad is just an amazing way of saying this is a pasta dish that is so great at room temperature. So if you have a busy summer, if you're hosting, if you want something that is really good meal prepped in the fridge for a few days, if you are out and about picnicking, you just want a lunch that's really good to take, or even kind of like a side dish for a dinner, pasta Pasta salads are it. Pasta salads are absolutely amazing. Also, yes, we're eating pasta on the Mediterranean diet. It is a huge part of the Mediterranean diet is something like pasta, aka carbs. All types of pasta are really, really good for you. Everything is so good for you as long as it's high quality and in moderation. So today I'm sharing three incredible, super easy pasta salads and I'm so excited to also share them because they are all variations of recipes I already have. So I usually come to my recipe videos and give you guys a bunch of new recipes, but today I tried to reuse as many recipes as I had already on my website because I want to show you guys that there are so many ways to use the recipes that I share with you. So many variations. So the first pasta salad is based off of another recipe that I made last summer. So this is kind of just using those same ingredients, which is a corn pancetta and arugula pasta salad. And the thing about all the pasta salads that I'm sharing today, you definitely want to eat them at room temperature and let them sit out for like an hour before you go to serve these pasta salads if they've been chilling in the fridge because I'm using all olive oil based pasta salads. Olive oil gets kind of solidified when it gets cold. So it's super important to make sure that all your pasta salads are eaten at room temperature today because of that delicious olive oil that we don't want all hard. We want it nice and luscious and delicious. Pasta salad number two is going to be a sun-dried tomato pesto that I created last year for a Spanish theme style kind of bowl. So I have that sun-dried tomato pesto, drenching it on some pasta with lots of cheese, three cheeses technically, because we have Parmesan in the pesto, mozzarella, and then ricotta salata for something nice and salty and for some nice sweetness and more vegetable goodness some roasted red peppers and for the third and final pasta salad it is going to be a green olive and herb citrus pasta salad I'm also going to add in radicchio to the mix this one is also dairy free as well as gluten free all three of these recipes could be gluten free and dairy free using a gluten free pasta and just subbing out or just leaving out the dairy that I put in all three of these recipes. That's totally up to you on making it gluten-free and dairy. All of these recipes can be totally mixed up and changed around depending on your preferences. I always leave details on how to change up these recipes to fit your wants and your needs on my website. All the recipes can be found on my website. In the description below, there are links to all the recipes. But I'm done talking about all these pastas. I just wanna make them and eat them. So let's hop in to recipe number one. So I'm starting off with the pancetta corn and arugula pasta salad. I'm just going to take a large saute pan here and add some pancetta that I cubed up pretty largely into the pan. And I want to make sure that it's actually cold because that'll help get a nice great sear is going from cold to hot. So I'm putting it just straight into the pan and then I'm gonna heat it over a medium high heat on the stove top. And we want to reserve as much as that fat as we can from the pancetta because that is going to give the sauce beautiful dimension of flavor. So on the stove, I have some water boiling. I'm just going to turn it down a little bit. I'm gonna cook off the pasta, so that way it's ready to go once everything else is. And I want the pasta to be like medium warm. So I wanna drain it, and I don't wanna immediately dump it in with everything, but I definitely want it to be still somewhat warm because in my opinion, when pasta is freshly cooked and it still has a little bit of warmth to it, that heat will help absorb more and more of that flavor that it's getting soaked in. And then when it cools down completely and sits in all that flavor, for a few hours or even up to a day, it's getting even more and more and more flavorful. So I got this really fun Dolce & Gabbana <laughs> expensive pasta because I just couldn't resist. It is a beautiful fun shape. Fusili corti col buco. You can use whatever shape you want. In my opinion, pasta salad should always be a really short pasta. You never want to use like spaghetti or linguine. I have my favorite tomatoes. Well, one of my favorite. You know that Campari are some of my favorite tomatoes as well as the amazing, incredible flavor bombs. Oh my gosh, they're just so good. So these are cherry tomatoes. Cherry tomatoes are much different than grape tomatoes. Cherry tomatoes are sweeter. They have a thinner skin. In my opinion, they're just a lot better than grape tomatoes. These ones on the vine, just stay so sweet and they get ripe and they're just absolutely delicious. So we're cooking the pancetta 
at a medium high heat. And then we're gonna strain the pancetta off, reserving all that delicious pancetta fat to cook the rest of the ingredients in. So I'm having these tomatoes so that way they are a easier thing to bite into. The beauty of a pasta salad is you wanna just be able to eat it with a fork. They can simmer till they get soft and juicy and just super delicious. Something amazing about tomatoes in a pasta salad is they give off a lot of juice and so it helps create a super luscious, flavorful sauce. I have two garlic cloves here. I'm just gonna smash them. I think it's enough garlic flavor with just smashing them and kind of cooking them in with everything and then I just remove them right before I go to dump everything together. However, if you love a lot, a lot of garlic flavor, go ahead and mince it. You don't have to worry about the garlic burning when you go to cook the tomatoes and the garlic because it'll be on such a low heat. And next, I have some amazing fresh Technically not, it was frozen from last summer. Some fresh corn, this is probably about one to two large cobs. And I'm just gonna drop that in once the tomatoes have finished. I don't necessarily wanna cook them, I just wanna get them warmed up in that flavor to absorb it as well. So the next few ingredients kind of make the sauce. So some red wine vinegar, and then some Dijon mustard, because I just think the tanginess of the Dijon mustard goes so well. You could use like minced shallots and kind of cook it with the tomatoes as well, or minced onions in general. You could use like green onions, if you wanted a bit of fresh flavor that's kind of herbaceous. I have pickled red onions here because I love pickled red onions. You wanna think about the flavor each of the ingredients gives to this recipe because each ingredient is so important. Why Mediterranean cooking is so delicious and so good for us because it's such minimal ingredients because every single ingredient you choose has so much flavor, offers so much to the recipe. So it's not a million ingredients, it's not a processed thing, it doesn't have to have a bunch of fillers and preservatives and extra natural flavorings. Mediterranean cooking is so good for us because every ingredient is so high quality and so full of flavor. So I'm just doing kind of a nice dice. I've given it about a minute to two minutes for the vinegar and the Dijon mustard to simmer with the tomatoes. I'm cutting the heat and I'm gonna add in the corn and red onions as well. So I went in with about a half a pound of pasta. <laughs> so now to the cooked pasta, I'm gonna take the tomatoes, the corn, the pickled red onions, all cooked in that delicious pancetta fat. So I just wanna lightly stir the pasta salad. I don't wanna stir it too much because the tomatoes start to break up quite a bit. So we're gonna prep the final things to go in. As it slightly cools down, it looks absolutely gorgeous. So we're gonna take a little bit of olive oil. I am just gonna drizzle some olive oil on top. This was open, I just got this in the mail. It's from Graza. Graza is oil from España, Spain, and they were so kind to give to me this incredible olive oil. You guys know I'm an olive oil snob. I only use high quality, single origin, really, really, really good in a dark bottle. It's so important that it comes in a dark bottle. It's so important to use really, really good single origin, high quality olive oil. Let's do a little taste test. It's good. It's not nearly as pungent as I'm used to. It's not really a pungent olive oil at all. It's not super fruity, so maybe that's just the area of Spain that this is from. Anyways, I'm gonna do a little drizzle on top. I wanna make sure this is really cooled down when I add in these last few ingredients because I do not wanna wilt the basil. So just big tears of basil. So the really great awesome thing about this is you can make it like two hours in advance to wherever you're going. So it can be done prepped ahead of time, which is really, really nice and convenient when summer gets so busy. Okay, perfect. The delicious, super crispy, falling pancetta straight in. Ooh. Mmm. So crispy. If it didn't make the bowl, that means I get to eat it early. We're gonna tear up just a little tiny bit of arugula. You don't want to make this obviously like a lettuce based salad, but I just want a little bit more greenery. Arugula adds a nice peppery bite that really complements everything. So I'm just gonna tear it because again, I want to make sure that it gets on my fork. You don't want these big leaves that are like hard to fit into your mouth when you're trying to eat this salad. And the last, but certainly not least, is we're gonna do some shades of Parmigiano Reggiano. And I like to take a vegetable peeler and just go in and take little tiny um, kind of, what is it called? Like peels. I like to just literally peel the Parmesan. So I'm gonna give everything a beautiful stir one last time, being very gentle not to break up those tomatoes. And so the really, really amazing thing about pasta salad too is you can make it your own. 
and you want to taste as you go. If you're going to have this pasta salad in the fridge for a few days, I would say add the arugula at the last minute and basil. They're such very, very um, delicate ingredients that they don't last too long in like a liquid mixture in the fridge or something like this. So I'd really recommend adding the basil and the arugula last minute. This looks unreal. So it's time to taste this incredible, so quick, so easy corn tomato pancetta pasta salad with basil, arugula, pickled red onions. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Let's get some crispy pancetta. Oh my gosh. What's so crazy about this pasta salad is almost every bite has a different flavor because sometimes you're getting the arugula, sometimes you're getting that super porky, delicious, crispy pancetta. Sometimes you're getting a soft, sweet, bursted tomato. Sometimes you're getting some pickled red onion or some sweet corn. Every bite is so full of flavor. So like fatty and saucy because you use that pancetta fat, but it's still so healthy because it's not like a thick, really like heavily preserved fatty sauce on this pasta. It's just a simple sauce of red wine vinegar, Dijon mustard, that pancetta fat, and some olive oil. So it's still such a light, healthy sauce, but it's totally satiating. Mm. This is so good. I promise you, you will not be disappointed if you make this pasta salad. It totally hits the spot. It's an amazing summertime meal. I can't stop eating this, so let's move on to recipe number two. For the second pasta salad recipe, we are gonna be doing the sun-dried tomato one. For this one, I'm using farfalle rigate. Farfalle are not my favorite uh, pasta shape, ironically, even though they're one of the most beautiful pasta shapes because I feel like they don't catch a lot of the sauce. The sauce doesn't really like cling to farfalle. So when I saw these farfalle that were kind of bridged like this, I thought that they would be absolutely delicious for a sauce because they would help pick up that sauce a little bit more. Once you have the sun-dried tomato pesto prepped and ready to go, this could not be more easier of a pasta salad to make. Like I said, I developed this pesto recipe last year for a um, bowl concept that I had made. And I changed out a few of the ingredients, like I took out the anchovies because it was like a shrimp bowl that I made this sun-dried tomato pesto for last year. So I thought I really didn't need the kind of salty anchovy bite, like that fishy bite, but I definitely wanted still something salty. So I added in parmigiano. A pesto just means sauce really in Italian. Pesto genovese is the one we know so widely in America with the basil. I kept the pesto pretty thick. I use it for so many other things, whether I wanted to spread it on toast or pair it with something else. So I'm gonna go ahead and just add in a little bit more olive oil to the pesto to thin it out just quite a bit. Once you have the pesto prepped, like I said, it is so, so, so easy to make this pasta salad. It comes together so quickly, and this one is also amazing for multiple days in the fridge. My protein source for this pasta salad to make it more of a complete meal is going to be all the cheese that I'm adding, because, you know, cheese is technically full of protein. I wouldn't say it's like a huge source of protein, but it does have some protein in it. However, feel free to like a good reason What? Ah, oh, my goodness. Okay, anyways, what I was saying, good reason to wanna make pasta salad is let's say you like grilled out last night and you have a bunch of meat that's like left over and you wanna use it up or shrimp or something like that. Or you have a rotisserie chicken you don't really know what to do with. You kinda just shred it up and add it to pasta salad. Or like if you have leftover like sausage, you wanna just cook it off and add it in. But there are so many variations of pasta salad. I could come up with a whole entire other recipe video, which I might if this one gets enough love for different variations of pasta salad. So I'm just gonna do a rough chop. They add sweetness, they add a nice smokiness as well to the dish and just give it more body. So that's another huge thing about pasta salads is the thing that makes it so like delicious is you get to have so much going on in a pasta. Traditional pasta recipes seen throughout Italy have such minimal amount of ingredients. The pasta salad is a fun way to add like five or so different types of ingredients to add a lot of volume to your pasta dish, which just makes it such a healthier option because you're not eating this like massive bowl of pasta, which not even the Italians do. You'll notice that the Italians eat pasta pasta and courses. Our portions in America for pasta are kind of ridiculous. Pasta often isn't the main meal like we treat it here in America. 
and they have different courses before and after to make you feel more satiated so you don't eat this massive bowl of pasta because that's never the goal. Pasta is fantastic for us just in the right serving size and moderation. And now I have a massive jar of pesto leftovers so you'll be seeing hopefully here in my vlogs a bunch of variations of that pesto because since I have so much leftover. But next I'm going to take the mozzarella. I think this is one of the most loved cheeses ever. I have the ciliegine which is just like cherry size. They're these little mini mozzarella balls. Quarter the mozzarella balls and add them in. And this just adds a different texture and some creaminess because you have so much flavor and saltiness and all this stuff going on in the pesto. And then you have that robust, sweet and smoky pepper. So this just adds a level of creaminess to kind of balance out the dish really well. The, the fun thing about cooking is you Mm, so good. As you get a snack while you cook. Sometimes I seriously cook an entire meal and then I don't even want to eat it after because I tend to snack while I cook. It's a bad habit. And then the last cheese that I have is the ricotta salata. So it's just ricotta that all the water has been pressed out of it and aged and salted. So it becomes like really crumbly and I would say it has the texture of feta. Mm. But it's so good. So I have the pasta that has been drained and it's slightly cooled. I waited about five to six minutes because I really don't want to melt the mozzarella, but I definitely still want it to be warm-ish. I'm just going to add a little bit more olive oil to the top of the pasta. And now it's time to do a fun stir. I'm going to also add in some of the crumbled cotta salata and a nice cheesy salty bite. Yum, this looks absolutely incredible. I added some basil and fresh oregano to the top of the pasta dish because I thought it needed a little bit of green and a little bit of herbs to bring it all home, but I'm so, so, so excited to try this. Sun-dried tomato pesto, mozzarella and ricotta salata pasta salad. Mm, this pasta is definitely al dente which is so needed because there's not really any crunch going on in this pasta. Oh my gosh, I love this. Mmm, the sweet roasted red peppers. We have the two types of cheeses running throughout. The salty, herby, nutty, sun-dried tomato pesto. Variations are endless if you wanted to add any other vegetables into this, if you wanted to add meats or any kind of more proteins into this. I have one more pasta I have to eat, so I need to put this down, even though I really don't want to. I'm gonna have the best week of meal prepped pasta. Definitely gonna share this with some loved ones, because it's a lot of pasta. But anyways, I'm gonna eat my last bite, and we are gonna move on to the third and final recipe. Buonissimo. Third and final pasta salad recipe. <laughs> so I have some gluten-free chickpea pasta here. You can use any gluten-free pasta you'd like if you are gluten-free or choose to be gluten-free at times. You could have subbed gluten-free pasta for the first two recipes. So really all of these recipes can be gluten-free. I always choose chickpea pasta when choosing gluten-free pasta because it has that extra protein. So why not? This is actually chickpea pasta imported from Italy. It's really fun um, kind of shells. This has to be good pasta if the Italians like it because I think they have like the highest standards in the world for pasta. So I'm really curious to see how this compares to like bonza or the other really popular chickpea pastas. Let's talk about the other things that'll be going into this pasta salad. The main component, which is the sauce. I have a green olive herb citrus tapenade here that I had made for a baked fish and parchment paper recipe. I had a whole fish recipe video a few months ago. Again, I took out the anchovies in this one as well, just because we didn't need that fishiness. And I also wanted to make this recipe vegan. So with making it vegan, I didn't add Parmesan. You can add Parmesan to this. I added nutritional yeast. That's totally optional. It just adds that salty, cheesy oomph, and it just melts into the sauce really well. So I have this incredible herbaceous olive sauce you could also add cheese to this if you are vegetarian mozzarella would be great feta would be an amazing option cheese would also be great I'm just trying to keep this recipe vegan for a great crunch I'm going to add pistachios the last thing I wanted to add is a head of radicchio I like lettuce in my pasta dish I didn't want to use arugula but you could radicchio has that also bitter bite to it you could add whatever lettuce you'd like uh, a lettuce goes really good in this pasta salad because it's so oily and then that's really all i'm adding i'm keeping it so 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 simple because the sauce alone has like so many of the ingredients that you want in a delicious pasta salad so once you have things prepped once you have your flavor bombs prepped you have so many meal options so um i need to stir this pasta <laughs> last year 
when I was in Italy, I made my nonna try chickpea pasta. And I'll never forget the face she made when she tried it. She was like, what is that? So I'm gonna go ahead and prep the radicchio. I'm just gonna take the bottom portion off. I'm gonna go ahead and quarter it and then just make thin little slices. Chickpea pasta cooks so fast and you wanna make sure never to overcook it because it goes from just the right amount of cookness to absolutely mushy in a matter of seconds. And I have to say, I tried the pasta to make sure obviously it was al dente. This is by far the best tasting and texture chickpea pasta I've ever tasted. So the Whole Foods imported from Italy chickpea pasta, it's so good. Added the radicchio into the bowl. I only needed about half, so I got a little carried away. I'm gonna take about a fourth a cup of pistachios. A really rough chop, I want like big chunks of pistachios all throughout, so you're getting that nice, crunchy, salty, roasted goodness. Could use whatever your favorite nut is. I just thought that the Sicilian olives wanted some pistachios to go with them because they're good together. <laughs> but you could use almonds, walnuts. I'm gonna go ahead and add them straight in. And then last but not least, the star of the show, which is the olive citrus herb sauce. We're just gonna dump the whole thing. So now I have everything in the bowl to drop the pasta in. <laughs> and now I have filled the bowl way too high and I'm scared of spilling, but here goes nothing. Oh yeah. We're just gonna be slow and gentle and just make sure that there's no overflowing. It is time to taste the third and final recipe, which is the olive herb citrus pasta salad with radicchio and pistachios. Oh my gosh, you guys, this one's my favorite. It's so simple, it is so refreshing. The orange actually complements everything so well. Don't be scared to put a little bit of orange juice in this. The pasta is cooked to perfection. The radicchio adds a little bit of bitterness on top of a nice little crunch and just freshness. Mm. Yeah, you get that saltiness and briny goodness from those olives. Any protein would work incredible here. I'm telling you guys, this is absolutely amazing. I've lost track of how much pasta I've eaten today. And it all tasted so good. I gotta stop. You gotta stop eating. I just love it all so much. Oh my god, pasta is so good. <laughs> amazing. All three pasta salads were absolutely amazing. They are all a little bit different in their own ways and each one can be changed up to exactly how you'd like using different types of ingredients, different ways to make it either gluten-free or dairy-free, whatever you want, whatever your preferences are, you can change up these pasta salads to fit your needs exactly how you want them to. I had so much fun today cooking three amazing different types of pasta salads and I would love to know which pasta salad looks most delicious to you, which one you're most eager to try or change up however you'd like to. If you have any other suggestions of videos you'd like to see, whether it's questions on the Mediterranean diet or the Mediterranean lifestyle, any ingredients that you're curious about, recipes that you're curious about, or just anything in general, I would love, love, love to talk to you in the comments and also help out and possibly make videos on the topics that you ask about. I love getting to chat with you guys in the comments. It's my favorite thing ever. I love my zestful family members, and I just really, really, really hope you enjoy this video found something delicious or learned something new from it. And I just wanna thank you so, so, so much for watching. Your support means the absolute world to me. And until next time, I hope you create a very, very zestful day. Ciao.